we're asked to design the interface circuit in this figure so that the 40 volt source delivers 2 volts at the output port of the interface circuit or delivered to the load. That is, we have a constraint at the output port such that V2 is equal to 2 volts. In addition, the resistance seen at the input port as well is 300 ohms. When that happens, we say that the input resistance is matched to the 300 ohm source resistance. So this example places constraints at both the output port and the input port of the interface circuit. In most cases, two independent constraints cannot be satisfied only using one resistor in the interface circuit. That's why you see two resistors. To see why, let's look at an example using a single resistor that's in series. In other words, we'll just get rid of the R2 for the moment and just see hap what happens if we just choose a single resistor of R1 that's in series with the source and the load. So here, let's say we select an R1 that's equal to 650 ohms. That implies we'll use a voltage divider. So we have this 300. We're going to use voltage divider. So our sum is going to be 300 plus this 650 plus this 50 ohm load that's in the denominator and since we're looking at the 50 that's in the numerator and then we multiply by our 40 volt source and that turns out to be 2 volts. Now but let's look at and that satisfies this constraint here of V2 equal 2 volt but let's look at the input constraint of 300 ohms our Rn looking at the terminals right here to the right of the 300 ohm resistor we have R1 is equal to 650 and in series with the 50 ohm and that's our 7 ohm, 700 ohm resistor as our input impedance but that does not fulfill that requirement Rn to be 300 ohm. So hopefully this illustrates the more constraints you add, the more degrees of freedom you need. So we have two constraints but one resistor, so that doesn't provide us the freedom necessary to satisfy these constraints. So that's why we looked at this two resistors, R1 and R2, and we'll see that this type of configuration happens to satisfy this design example. So let me erase this, and then we can press on with the design. So to meet both requirements we need a two resistor L circuit that is shown here and we can design this circuit such that we have an RQ first we need to calculate which is consists of R2 in parallel with the 50 ohm so R2 in parallel with the 50 ohm and that the input resistance so this is REQ and that the input resistance is equal to R1 plus the equivalent resistance between this parallel combination of R2 and the 50 ohm. So it's R1 plus REQ is equal to 300 ohm, applying our constraint that the input resistance seen at the input port is 300 ohms. Now at the output port we need the constraint to be 2 volts so V2 is equal to 2 volts and we take a look at that and we just simply see a voltage divider such that REQ is the equivalent resistance right here So that's our REQ all over the sum of these resistance, 300 plus R1, 300 plus R1 
plus R E Q all that multiplied by 40 and that should equal 2 volts across the 50 ohm resistor or V2. We note that this term here R1 and REQ must equal 300 so that R1 plus REQ is 300 shown here so we have V2 is equal to 2 which is equal to 300 plus 300 times 40. So that implies that 40 R E Q is equal to 1200 which implies R E Q equals 300 ohms. Well, we note that REQ is 30 ohms, which is consists of a parallel combination between R2 and 50. So REQ equals 30, and the parallel combination is just R2 times 50 all over R2 plus 50. When you solve for that, that gives an equation of 50 R2 equals 1500 plus 30 R2. Solving for R2 and this yields R2 equals to 75 ohms. Now since REQ is equal to 30 ohms, the import input the input port constraint then tells us that R1 is equal to 300 minus REQ which is 270 ohms. Now we have R1 is equal to 270 ohms and R2 is equal to 75 ohms. And this design satisfies both the input constraint of 300 ohms and the output constraint of 2 volts.